Hi, my name is Michael Bayuk, and I'm going to give a demo for WASTA, a mobile English application. WASTA is a mobile English language learning platform that brings small group learning and facilitates it with a mobile technology that incorporates AI powered original content. We're also able to provide learning tracking, multi-language support, and performance monitoring. Our ability to customize the content based on the learner preferences and input allows us to make sure that the content is level appropriate. The session itself targets language and repeats its exposure to help uh, with retention. Uh, our activities are varied and the activities are already created and structured in a way that they're more static where the original content is dynamic mm -hmm. and fills in uh, the needed spaces into the activities. We say original content, the content can be on any topic that the learner is interested in or that the instructor chooses that they feel best for their students. The sequencing of the activities is also quite important and is much thought has been put into that to ensure that there is a somewhat of a flow. Consider this as a traditional uh, lesson plan. A, an instructor teacher considers what comes first and what comes at the end. So that is also intentional too in the design of uh, this program. For learners to engage in this, they will all need their own device and an internet source, either their own data plan or Wi-Fi. WASTA is also able to integrate with your existing LMS. Uh, I believe it might be Moodle, in this case for Imidist, but uh, there are other uh, platforms that it could work with. We're able to do this via a learning record store, an LRS, that communicates with your LMS, the learning management system. I've been an Amadeist, or I've been affiliated with Amadeist for quite some time. I, I did the access program, but I've also tested this concept in a low tech version at Amadeist, uh, and it worked quite well. I started with a few small groups, and eventually at the, the height of its activity, we were able to fill rooms two and three in the bottom. Now, this was right before COVID and COVID changed a lot of things, but for me, this is somewhat of a proof of concept. A lot of people were interested and it brought in uh, a lot of uh, learners that potentially weren't coming for the paid sessions. Um, and it brought in great activity and exposure. How does it work? So. The instructor or host will log in and they will create the parameters. Uh, they will input the parameters and then ultimately create the session, which will then be shared via a QR code or a simple join code. That could be done on the mobile phone or their laptop. The learners, in turn, will scan that QR code and also input their learner ID or scan another QR code to sign in as their learner profile. Once they're in, then they can either join a group or create their own group. This allows students sitting at multiple or students uh, sitting at certain tables to form a group with the people that they're sitting with. This reduces the amount of movements and it creates uh, an easier formation. Once the session is started by the instructor, then they will be taken through activities that will improve their speaking skills in addition to the other skills such as reading writing and listening let's talk about the instructor experience first the instructor will log in and these uh, logins can be given uh, by myself or wasta uh, beforehand and we, we were able to to create these quite quickly the instructor will have a a home page similar to this if they were to click courses, they will see uh, the courses that they have available. They can create uh, their, their own classes um, as they wish, 
And if they come and they click here, they'll be able to see the learners that have been added to their class. And they are able to edit that on their own. If they click uh, print access codes for all learners, this will give the learner ID QR codes I spoke about that the students need to scan in addition to the session QR code. These codes allow the students to sign in with their ID. Um, this way that their progress can be monitored and associated with their ID. We spoke about the, the possible need to have QR codes or learner IDs that are more uh, temporary. So any, kind, any learner that walks in can use an ID and that is still possible. Just that the, the learner data that we would uh, have would not be so useful as there would be multiple learners using the same ID. But this still allows anyone to come into the, the speaking club, the, the learning class, and use an ID and have a seat, have a place in the application. We come back to the home page and click on learners. We can see here a list of all the learners that are registered. We can see their access code. So if a student needs to see their access code again, you could show that. We can edit their name and we could also remove them. If we go to add the learner, it's quite easy. We click that button and we type in their name and a QR code will be generated for them. Let's get a session going. So I'm gonna go back to courses. I'm gonna click start classroom session at the top. When I click that, I'm presented with a screen for inputting preferences here for the session. I can toggle the duration. I can make that as little as 30 minutes, or I can make it as much as two hours. The language proficiency, I can toggle that as well. There are A1 and A2 levels, but that restricts some of the features of the application as less, there are few activities that can fully accommodate low levels such as A1 and A2. B1 to C2 allows all activities and functionality. So I will pick B2. Uh, for ages, we do this to ensure that the content is appropriate. We do filter the content uh, regardless of the age to make sure that it's appropriate and there's nothing controversial. Uh, type of session is an interesting feature where we can toggle if the session is going to be more academic or more fun. So we may have activities that have uh, prompts for writing or speaking. Those prompts may be more academic in nature, whereas fun would be more creative and a little less serious. Focus skills here are quite clear. If you want to focus more on your speaking, we will heavily weight activities with speaking activity, uh, speaking uh, aspects more, so they have a higher probability of being chosen. When you click continue, you're ne taken next to the topic and vocabulary screen. Here, you can enter your own topic and subject and that can also generate its own vocabulary automatically. Or you can click suggestions that are presented to you based on the, the intensity between fun and academic, the age, and your other inputs in the previous screen. So here we clicked artificial intelligence. And you can see here that the vocabulary terms for this session have already been generated. These are going to be the target vocabulary that in fact will generate all the content. All the content that will be used, the, the prompts, uh, will be based on maximizing exposure to these vocabulary terms. This is using the concept of space repetition, where we're repeatedly introducing or repeatedly showing and exposing the learners to these vocabulary terms so that we can convert their working memory into long-term memory. After you confirm the vocabulary and the topic, you are taken to a review screen where you could just see that what you have inputted is going to be created. And if you want to go back, you can edit that. 
I think it's fine, so I'm going to click Create Session. Then we have a screen that shows uh, while the session is being built. Now, here we can see Finalizing Session. We can see the courses that are being generated here. When that's finished, the learners will have, uh, the instructor will have a screen such as this. This is the QR code to join the classroom. Now, you can see here a, a review. Uh, this is another topic and another uh, example of screenshot. So uh, we have the vocabulary terms here. We have the topic as well and it, the QR code here. And then below that, we have active learner sessions. Now, this is going to change as learners start to join. As you can see here, we have two groups that have joined, that have been formed and students have joined. Now, those groups are not just here uh, for reference for the teacher. They're actually going to become a visual indicator of their activity. As you can see here, we're able to see how many learners, and we're also able to see what activity they're on and then the playing duration. Notice that the playing duration is green. The playing duration color bar will the uh, bar color will change based on if they are behind or too far ahead. If they are behind where they're expected to be, that will turn to red. That indicates to the instructor or teacher that they should probably come to this group and check on them. If they are too, uh, so for example, we can look here, we can see that the playing duration is red and is, and is ahead of the activity. This means that they're taking too long, whereas this playing duration bar is green. So these indicators, if they're taking too long or if they're going too fast, We'll let the instructor know they should check. If they're going too fast, maybe they're skipping a lot of the, the content. So let's jump into the, the learner experience. What does that look like? The learner, when they join the session, will be introduced to the topic. They will have target vocabulary that they will go through. And then they're introduced to the first activity, which is a baseline. We introduce the target vocabulary, and then we want to see their existing knowledge on these terms. This is how we're going to measure learning in this session. We're going to see the difference, the learning gain between the baseline and the summative assessment at the end. They will both be this format, and we will have different questions for the same vocabulary. So you can see it's responsive. They can say it's too difficult. And then we get into the activities and the activities are varied. This one is discussion. We use prompts here for different phones. So every learner will have a different prompt depending on their role in the activity. In addition to prompts, we sometimes also provide uh, starters, uh, suggested texts to assist students and learners that might have difficulty coming up with what to say at, on the spot. In addition to activities, we also include evaluations. Uh, as you can see here, peer evaluation is a big, a big part of WASTA. So learners will, will learn to review others and give uh, recognition as well. If you can see at the bottom here, we're able to look at another user in this, in this uh, example, chatty links. So we're going to evaluate their speaking with similar factors that you might find on an English proficiency test exam, vocabulary, pronunciation, fluency, and relevancy. So we're going to evaluate this user, and this will be recorded anon anonymously and reported at the end anonymously. We, in between activities, we have a progress map that shows their status uh, in the session, how far they've progressed, um, and introduces the next topic. For this example, we have jigsaw reading. This is where each user has text to read that is different from each of the other user's text. 
then we're going to have questions based on the text that the users read and the users must work together to answer the questions where each has different information. And this is the, the trivia, the, the multiple uh, choice uh, component that you will see in Jigsaw Reading, but we also have another activity called Trivia, which offers uh, interesting facts uh, or questions based on interesting facts. You can see we, we give uh, feedback if they got it correct. We also, if they get it incorrect, we also let them know that as well. Another activity we have is the writer's room. So we allow them also to practice the, the skill of writing. So here they can, they're given a prompt um, to write on AI and healthcare. This is uh, what we see here. And we can have the vocabulary that we want to focus on and use. Once the student has inputted their, their text, they can say finished writing. And then other learners are going to review their writing and read it out. And then they will also give an evaluation. So again, peer evaluations are a big part. Uh, we have some games. Bingo is based on another user reading text that has these uh, bingo um, vocabulary terms. And the other users must listen and input. When they have heard three in the appropriate sequence or order, they will be able to, to have a bingo. And the other user must review and make sure that it is bingo and confirm. At the end of WASTA sessions, we have something called group processing. Group processing is important for small groups to review their learning and consider and reflect on ways to improve it. So we have discussions as in the previous screen, but we all, what we have here is an ability now for, for them to determine what activities did they like in the session and what activities did they not like. Once they determine that, we will look at the, what they liked and see what is their favorite of that list of liked activities. This information will be good and valuable where we can know perhaps ways to improve the learner experience. At the end is the assessment to determine the learning. So we want to see what vocabulary terms did the learner uh, get incorrect in the beginning and get correct now. And we are going to then report that in the summary. So the summary is the last screen. It, it identifies who you learned with, uh, some session details, and then it talks about the vocabulary words. Um, so you learned these words, you struggled with these words, or some feedback. And then we talk about achievements. So achievements here will give you the recognition that you received from your peers. Um, if you won any kind of games or contests, here we have a caption contest activity. And then at the bottom, we have evaluations based on the session. Now, for this example, I ran through quickly, so that's why they're all showing 50. But these would vary based on the, your peer evaluation. And it would be a, uh, an average of those evaluations. I didn't show you all the activities, so this, so this demo would not be extremely long. We have what you see here, uh, speech, discussion. We have a summary activity, brainstorm, quiz, which we're going to rename as trivia, group processing. We have the reporting in the end. Uh, we have bingo. We have a selector that's actually within some activities that randomly chooses users. Two truths and a lie, a caption contest, jigsaw reading, listen up, writer's room, and fill in the blank. If you would like, you're more than welcome to go to wasta.fun and test this yourself. When you go to wasta.fun on your, on your phone or your desktop, you'll be given a screen similar to this. What you should do is go to the top and click sign in. You will need to have an account to create your own sessions. So go to create an account. And then once you have done that, you will see that your name is at the top, whatever name you put, and then you can create a session and explore WASTA. Thank you for your time.